Hello YouTube and welcome back to the Loose Transistor channel. I'm your host Lucas and today we are going to be doing a review of the Tevo Tarantula that I showed you guys the unboxing video of the last time. I'll put the link in the description if you haven't seen it yet you might want to check it out just so you get an idea of what comes with the kit. Uh, a couple things that I want to go over before we talk about that review is uh, two of the upcoming videos that I have coming. One of them is going to be a build and review series a little bit longer on the uh, Colombian Carbon Middleman and I'll put a link under the description as well and I'll show you guys a picture of what I'm talking about. But that's going to be a pretty sweet build, it's a fairly unique uh, frame, I haven't seen many like it, it looks like extremely streamlined and nice and light. And uh, I'm going to be using the uh, F motors, uh, F80s, uh, the 2200 KV. So these little beasts right here, these things look insane. So I'm really looking forward to that build. It's going to be more of a freestyle build, but I will go over it soon. And the second build I have coming is uh, Strictly Racing Drones, the SRD5, I believe. Um, it's just a uh, regular X 5-inch frame, but I just really like the simplicity of that frame. So we'll be going over that as well in the next coming week. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and don't miss any of that. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the Tebo. So if you've seen the video and you've seen what came with it, uh, I ended up doing the build with my wife. So let's talk a little bit about the build. Um, it did take a long time. Uh, it took us about two days to build the whole thing, probably because we were completely inexperienced. This is literally the first 3D printer I've ever put together. And uh, I should have probably checked out some of the of the videos online before I did that. But um, I just decided to go with it and trust the manual. So I don't recommend you do that if you're going to build the Tevo. Uh, make sure you uh, go through YouTube and check out some of the build videos that other folks have done because they go into extreme detail on how to put this together and I ended up having to do almost everything twice. So uh, take your time to familiarize yourself with how this gets put together before you start it. It's definitely not uh, something that I would say is that simple for the first time you build a printer. However, if you've built printers before, this is probably going to be easy peasy, no problem. The manual is actually fairly clear. The second thing about the build that I wasn't quite prepared for was uh, the firmware. So the firmware didn't actually match the manual. I built it based on the manual, right? So uh, I'm going to show you guys here one sec. So the Y axis, sorry, the Y axis motor back there, that guy right there, um, was put on the left side of the rail. Now that might mean nothing to you, but uh, if you know the Tevo, that basically means that if you have the regular firm firmware that uh, Marlin and Tevo ship with this board, it's gonna be reversed. So when you turn it on the first time, the table just comes crashing all the way to the front, and since you don't have a, a stop sensor here, it just freaks out. So that led me into a quest, finding a firmware that would work with my Tevo. And uh, I ended up having to download Marlin RC8, I believe, and configure it myself, and I ended up with something that's actually working and printing very nicely. However, that's again another challenge that if you're not used to uh, maybe playing around with some code or you're not willing to, you know, look for it, it's, it's going to be a little bit tough. So uh, just two things to keep in mind. However, I love the unit. Once it's built and once I set it up, holy crap, this thing is awesome. It works really, really, really good. It's not super loud. I can run it all night. No, it doesn't really bother me or the wife, and she's a pretty light sleeper. So uh, let's go over how long it took to set it all up. So after I built it, it took about two days. Um, it took me a while to get it working properly. I had some problems with leveling because of the eccentric uh, nuts that hold the, the cradle in place. I didn't have them set properly, so I had to do that. So make sure you check that when you build it. Same with the eccentric nuts over here. Make sure that they're pressing against the rail evenly all throughout and make sure that everything is square. So to do that, it took me a little while. And as you can see, I've already printed some upgrades for it. These just help stiffen it up and uh, hold it all together very nicely. The other upgrade that you're gonna make sure that you are gonna want with the Tevo for sure is a parts cooler. Uh, this makes a whole lot of difference in the quality of your prints. Like it makes them much better finish and uh, much better detail. And uh, it should be very easy to find uh, something like this on Thingiverse. So there are other upgrades as well, like the base here that just helped to solidify and put everything on a more even footing because my desk is not quite straight. So as you can see, I have some paper here. Uh, we also have these little guys that just make it easier to level the bed. And I have, of course, put some LEDs on the top bar over here and as well as on the back over here. And that just helps me see the builds and see the layers going down. And uh, if I want to check on it at night and don't have to turn any lights on, I just, uh, you know, keep going. Another thing you're going to want to make sure on the Tevo when you set it up is that the tension on the belts is nice and firm and should sound kind of like an E string. You might not be able to hear it there, but I can hear it over here. And uh, you're also gonna want to make sure that the PTFE Bowden tube is seated all the damn way in there. I had a lot of extrusion problems because my Bowden tube wasn't quite all the way there. Ended up causing a clog. I had to take the whole thing apart to get it 
freed up. So these are all just things that you kind of learn on the go. So there's a, right now for 3D printers, there's a bit of a steep learning curve, but once you get past that, things become a lot more easier and they make a lot more sense. Uh, other than that, I've been able to get some really, really nice quality functional prints using the stock PLA that came with the printer. So like, for example, uh, this right here came out of the printer. It's just a little guillotine for uh, cutting uh, shrink tubing. Works perfectly well, very nice. This was printed at 0.2 millimeter layers, I believe. Uh, we have some wire holders here. These were printed with that printer as well. Uh, pretty much right after I set it up, this is probably one of the first prints. So as you can see, it's already pretty damn nice. And uh, from then on, I was able to improve the quality of the prints by tightening everything up and uh, it's continued to hold up extremely well. I'm gonna show you some of the prints that I did that are a little bit more artistic. So here it is, the T800. That printed out extremely nice. I'm very, very happy with how that came out. It took me two tries because the first time I had some feeding issues because my spool was uh, a little bit tangled. But uh, since clearing that up, everything has been great. So um, I'm very happy with how the printer prints once you set it up. And all considered, it took me about two weeks to get it from, or sorry, about, yeah, about two weeks to get it from the box to where you see it right now working perfectly where I barely have to adjust the table anymore, like just a few little tweaks here and there after a few days. So I'm very, very happy with it. Another thing that I recommend you get is a fan for the supplied power supply. So uh, this is gonna be a pretty uh, crappy little job as you can see there is just some hot glue and a 40 millimeter motor. However, that already makes a huge difference. That power supply tends to get extremely hot. So I recommend that you uh, get something like that and mount it on it because you don't want that stuff getting too, too hot. Uh, other than that, borosilicate glass is pretty much a must. So you want to make sure that you have borosilicate because uh, I really didn't like printing on the bed directly. I found that it, the prints stick too much to the bed and uh, you have a really hard time peeling and you have to end up using some sort of metal scraper. And uh, to me, that just ruins the finish. So borosilicate and some uh, hairspray seems to do the trick quite well. Would I recommend the printer? Absolutely. It's a good kit for a good price. I got it from electronicgeek.ca. Um, a very, very reasonable price for what the printer is capable of doing. And the best part about printers is that as soon as you have one, you can print upgrades. Uh, I could add different mounts to have a second Z bar if I wanted to. I just have to buy the motors and so on, but the possibilities become limitless. Uh, I've already found great uses for it, printing functional things for me around the house and tools and uh, like this silly wire stripper has already been pretty helpful. So uh, I do really enjoy having a 3D printer and I, I can see many, many, many uses for it. Uh, I even ended up 3D printing a uh, gear shifter knob inspired on Mad Max. I'll put a picture of it so you can take a look and see what I'm talking about. But it turned out quite good, especially considering it's just some sanded PLA and uh, some wheel paint. So um, I haven't yet tried TPU and uh, functional parts for quads. That's going to be coming up next. So in the next video series about the Tevo, I'm going to be doing, uh, I'm going to be trying to design my own micro drone frame in PLA for now just to get it going and we'll see how it goes. So uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel because you don't want to miss any of that and I'll catch you guys next time.